One of the greatest benefits of an PLC based system versus a purely relay logic machine is that a PLC can reduce your wiring by a vast amount. <laughs> you can make your panels smaller and you can buy less equipment and therefore you can maintain less equipment and therefore you can change things easier and quicker for free let's say. Um, so here is a real-life example of something that I've had to be working on for the last I don't know I've been working on it off and on for a couple of weeks steal a couple of minutes here and there but I have two machines out in the plant one has a PLC one has a relay panel and no PLC both of the machines do basically the same task however the one with the PLC we were able to automate some important functions that the machine uh, needs done which is dye box grease and dye box oil we have to oil and we have to grease components within um, this machine's dye box so this is an example of the logic that's in the machine right now the one with the PLC so I wanted to show you real quick I'm using two timers you see timer one right here and timer two right here in this example timer one is set for 30 seconds timer two is set for two and you can see one is called the delay duration timer and the other one is called the grease duration timer and you can see that I have a force on this input the reason is I'm sitting at my desk in a lab and I don't have any real-world input so I'm simulating a machine cycle start condition which is a machine in cycle like continuous automatic just going 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 alright so the way this logic is structured is I need to run timer one for 30 seconds when it's done I'm going to say here's the done bit the DN is the done bit so when I'm done and the machine is running start timer two for two seconds timer two's timer timing bit which is on while timer two is going between zero and two thousand with the accumulator so while it's timing up you see it's on right now that will turn on and allow the dye box grease solenoid which is an electric solenoid on an air pump sitting in a bucket of grease to dispense the grease through the lines through the manifold into the dye box alright this is a very common thing we have to do on machines and as you can see also I have a manual grease push button alright <clears throat> so you can see what's happening here is timer 2 is not done timer 1 times when timer 1 is done and the machine's running so if the machine were down for the weekend they turned it off uh, for on the Friday night after the shifts were over you don't want this thing pumping grease into a, a die box that the machine isn't running and it isn't in any way consuming any grease so you have this little machine cycle start contact that has to come in from an actual relay that's doing something it's a motor starter or it's a, a logic relay that's in the panel or whatever you could probably get away with using a, in all internal to the PLC but there are some uses for some relays in the actual panel but if the machine's running and we've been two hours since we greased let's grease for two seconds I'm sorry in real life I do two hours but in this case it's 30 seconds so it's been 30 seconds and the machine is running basically grease for two seconds when this timer's done it'll reset itself here this done bit turns on and it blocks this path so that means timer one will die it will turn off loses power well that will kill the done bit for it which will kill timer two well when timer two dies timer one starts timing again because the done bit turns off on timer two so it seems a little bit
maybe a little bit crazy, maybe a little bit difficult to follow, but um, this is this is kind of normal stuff, sort of an auto resetting timer system. Okay, there's also a manual push button right here. So let's right click on that and let's force it on. That's going to simulate someone holding the manual push button on the operator panel. Now, do you see a problem with this? My duration timer did not reset, right? I'd like it to not run when I'm holding the manual grease button because if I hold manual grease and then I let go like this, but my timer's already way up there, it's going to grease again very shortly. So let's say that this logic needed to be modified. Well, tell you what, the way I would do it, you can reset it with a PLC. You just take this wrong, you just double click it, you start editing, or you can right click and do edit. I would just say, let's just add a normally closed contact of the dye box grease solenoid right here. And let's add it in. So now, you can see the timer is only at 20 seconds, but I'm going to force on this bit, and look at that, it zeroed it out because it died. It can't get power anymore. So it's reset. So now when I let go, it starts again. Now, that is a difficult thing to do comparatively with a relay-only machine because you have to go in there, you have to confirm you actually have contacts, normally closed contacts on whatever's running this. So you may have to add a relay just to get some normally closed contacts just to pile it in. Or you have to see if the, the push button maybe has a normally closed contact because you could potentially steal this guy here. I'm going to drag it because you can drag these in, in logics. You could maybe put this up here normally close to the push button. But in real life, you have to run a wire now all the way out to the push button, wherever that is. That could be a long ways away. It's not undoable. You know, you, you can do it. But man, is it easier to do this in the logic. Just force it on. Boom. It, everything's off. Right? You got your grease and your timers are off. Remove the force, and they start up again. It's so nice. Now let me show you what this looks like without a PLC. So if I go up here, in a machine I have out there right now, I have this scenario twice. Okay, I have the grease, and I have the oil. So with the PLC I showed you, I have two timers, an internal, um, a couple internal contacts from the, you know, from inputs, boom, no big deal at all. Well, this is all really wired. You can see the wire numbers, you can see the terminal numbers, you can see the part numbers for the relays. I need to buy two of this relay, two of this relay, because those are timing relays. They're the timer instructions in the mechanical world. I have to add four relays, like real relays, I have to wire between the CSCR, which is the cycle start control relay, I have to have two more contacts off it, so if I didn't have two more contacts, I would have to add another physical relay to get some more contacts. I happen to have seven and eight contact pairs on this thing, so I'm, I'm very lucky that I actually have them. And then I have to buy the right relays that have normally closed contacts, normally open contacts, and instantaneous contacts. Which this is the timer timing. This is the not done, this is the done, and this is the timer timing in the timer instruction in the Alan Bradley. Now, notice that if I were to want to add that little feature that I did, just throwing this in, in the hardwire print, that becomes a lot of work. Now I've got to 
cut into wire 35, I've got to relabel some physical wire. Um, I either have to cut it and add a piece of equipment or run some long wires out to the operator panel. It's a lot messier than it is to just wire the inputs to a PLC and wire the outputs from the PLC. Now whether you use terminal block to do that or you're directly wiring to the PLC doesn't really matter. Um, I personally like to go to terminal block because it's easier to modify things. Uh, it gets really crowded at a PLC a lot of times. Um, but this is an example of where you might really wish you had a PLC because this design job here is going to have that design that design flaw in it because I'm not going to bother to it's two hours so unless the guys are always hitting the grease button six times an hour and then I come around with the auto grease they're already way over greased right so I'm going to leave this this way, but in a PLC world, that'd be so easy to just make it perfect, right? Which is, uh, which is just to add this contact right here. It's free to add that contact in a PLC, but man, is it not free in a real relay panel, okay? There's tons of examples like that, so I don't know. Uh, maybe that's something you didn't think of or never cared <laughs> probably to know but uh, that is kind of how things go so if this video is interesting to you um, let me know uh, if you want to see something similar or different let me know if you want me to never make videos again <laughs> you can let me know <laughs> and uh, have a good day alright